G'day, today we're talking steel trays. This is the steel tray we've built for my N70 uh, Project 6 seater Toyota Hilux Workmate. Uh, this has um, come up pretty good. Um, but we're talking electrics today, so this is wiring it in. We'll talk tail lights and all that sort of stuff another day. But for now, we're just talking the, the electrics that I've run to the back of the ute. So uh, in the dash, I've got a factory look Toyota switch, which just says roof lights. Hit that, that's a, a line from the, a fuse line from the battery, and then it runs down the back, and that gives current, uh, provides current for my tray. And there's three different functions that we have on the tray. Uh, we've got lighting, we've got uh, six Hella LED lights on the top, which will be the topic of another video. They've all been converted to LED from uh, originally from halogen, then they went to um, HIDs, and now they're all LED. Uh, we've got some. We've got so we've got Hella work lights on the top. We've got uh, sorry, Hella driving lights on the top. We've got um, some Nava LED work lights, which are adjustable on uh, up here as well. And then we've got a uh, an Anderson plug and a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter plug as well um, and that's running off some uh, heavy line from the battery fuse uh, that goes into a switch in the dash so I can turn this on or off it's off at the moment so that gives me power to the back here now to work out your fuse you just need to work out your current drawer one of the reasons I've gone LEDs in all these is because the current drawer is a lot less uh, it had HID these lights up the top had HIDs in it previously uh, and HODs are pretty efficient. They don't have a, much in terms of an ongoing current draw, but on startup to warm up those ballasts, they have a, a lot more current draw than the LEDs, which is why we've switched over to LED lights. Uh, but then you have to figure out how much you're gonna run it, run it at once. So typically, this will, the roof on the lights, they're largely, the lights on the roof, roof on the lights. Lights on the roof are largely there for aesthetic reasons. Uh, I will use them, you know, if I'm, you know, spotlighting or something at night. Um, that's when they'll be used, but largely they're aesthetic. Um, they're not really going to do a whole much, do a whole lot, uh, but they're there. Uh, and I had them lying around the shed. I actually got them for free years ago, and I just thought, oh well, fit them to the Ute. Who cares? Um, and also because you're not supposed to have uh, driving lights behind you, having um, them wired. I've got them. I've got three switches in here. Uh, three rocker switches and uh, by having the switch for these lights back here and having them turned off police officer pulls me over and says oh you've got lights on your roof yes I do officer but I can't control them I cannot turn them on from in the car they're purely off-road use only and the fact that the switch is back here and it's set to off I cannot turn them on from the cabin then they are genuinely off-road use I will not I, I will not and cannot use them on the road so um, what I can do, so I hit the switch on the dash to give power to the tray. And then I've got one, one, two, three rocker switches. So um, there we go. So three rocker switches and the rocker switches will turn, if I've got the, the power on the dash, will send power to the driving lights, the work lights, or my, um, uh, or my power socket, which I'll show you in a second. So. Uh, three rocker switches just drilled. So I've got this is in box. The reason that the headboard's in box, it's nice and strong. We've got a nice bend in it to try and contour it with the side of the ute. Uh, but the reason it's in box is so that um, it's nice and strong and it's a good mounting surface. So it's a good mounting surface as opposed to tube. You can mount on tube, but with box, it's a nice flat surface to mount my driving lights on, my reversing camera, which is a topic of another video and my rooftop lights. So all of that is a really good surface to mount to, and it's nice and solid as well in case of heaven forbid an accident. Uh, so what we've done is we've got power coming in out of the back of the ute, and then it comes into the, it runs into a, into a grommet here, which goes into the box, and then that splits to my three switches. So you hit this switch, roof lights, second switch, work lights, third switch, tray power. So, and they're just a rocker switch. Uh, watch for another video on how to cheap buy cheap rocker switches. Um, these were a steal if you know um, where to look. Uh, it can save you heaps and heaps of money on buying a rocker switch by just buying a generic panel, but that's the subject of another video. So this, uh, so one switch comes back out again, and we've got our power to our cigarette lighter plug, 
and our Anderson plug and I'll use that to run a fridge if I've got a fridge on the back. So we went away last week and I ran this quite successfully with the fridge running uh, absolutely no problems at all and the current drawer on my lights is so little it won't be a problem if I have to turn my work lights on and direct them to have a look at my uh, fridge if I want to see what's happening back here at night. So I just got them drilled three holes, one, two, three, mounted my rocker switch in there, pulled the wiring through, wired them all in, pushed the rocker switches back in. I've run uh, uh, wiring up through the headboard. It drops out here for one of my work lights, then goes back through across to the other side and drops down for my other work light on the other side and then goes up here and then daisy chains one, two, three, four, five, six for my rooftop lights. Nice and simple, uh, three rocker switches. Everything looks flush, you can't see them. So uh, nobody's gonna muck with them, nobody's gonna know that they're there. Well, you guys know that they're there now. But by looking at the tray, even from the side, you can't see the rocker switches. So I'll show you where they are. If you can see them, there they are, my three rocker switches, one, two, three. And then there's my Anderson plug. If we swing this around here, Bring that down there. You can see there's my um, Anderson plug cigarette lighter. So nice and succinct, no wiring dangling around. All the wiring runs through the cabin, runs um, from the battery into the cab to the switch and then down under the floor and pops out the back of the car and then uh, into the headboard. And apart from that much wire sticking out through the back of the cabin, you can't see that there's any um, wiring lying around, nothing going to get caught, nothing going to get snagged, nice and um, succinct, let's say, uh, and, and um, neat install. So that's a nice little way to, um, you know, flush mount, uh, Anderson plug and cigarette lighter plug. Uh, you can buy, that was $15, you know, in some places they'll sell you the Anderson plug for that. Comes with everything you need to wire it in. So that's a nice little flush mount, it's out of the way. If I'm putting anything in the ute, it does stick out a little bit, but it's unlikely to get drastically damaged if it gets hit. So that's nice and compact uh, and gives me a, a good power source for the back of the car. So, I mean, you might not run roof lights, you might want an additional power source. You know, you might want an inverter plug back here somewhere, mount the inverter on the back of the ute. In, a, in an N70, there's plenty of room for, to mount an inverter on the back firewall of the ute and then run your wiring back through with maybe a socket to plug into um, if you want to run anything on the back of the ute. But uh, with, with a nice box section tray, you can do it with tube too, you can feed it through your headboard, nice and simple but it keeps all that wiring away so you don't have it out, it's not going to snag on anything. And by keeping it coming out of the back of the ute high, um, it's unlikely that something flicks up from your wheel or the road that's going to snag it, pull your wiring out. So hopefully, uh, with my wiring mounted nice and high, nothing going under the tray, that's all mounted high, uh, nothing gets pulled out. So um, that's how we did the electrical on it. As I said, it's mounted to a factory look Hilux switch on the dash which actually says roof lights, but it controls more than that. Um, and everything looks relatively factory and nice and concealed. So if you're doing something like this and you want to put your switches um, in your headboard, if you're using box, you just need to make sure that when you mount your headboard, there's, if, there's enough room on this headboard that I could have mounted the switches on this side or I could have done the other side because the, this headboard's right smack bang in the middle, that piece of sheet is right smack bang in the middle of the of the headboard. So I could have mounted the switches on this side or this side, but I've gone this side just because this is the load area. I mean, there, it is a possibility this is gets smashed and it is a possibility the switches, if they were here, got smashed. And also by having them on this side of the tray, on the other side, you can't see them. So if you're a random passerby, you don't know where my switches are, you're not gonna muck with them. Some people have got nothing better to do. So that's how we did the electrics install. Uh, we'll cover the other thing that's electrical on the back of the ute another day, which is my reversing camera. We'll talk about that um, when we talk about the new head unit that's in Project Six Seater, which I'm really, really happy for. Uh, watch out for that and watch for, uh, check it if you're more interested in what we did in building the tray, check out the other video which talks about building the tray and also uh, fitting the toolboxes and the trundle tray. It talks about storage options in a uh, in a dual cab ute. So I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching.